Good morning. morning. It's great to have all of you here on a wet and soggy morning. Good to have you here as we join together as God's people to celebrate God's gifts of life and to be the people of God gathered together in this place at this time. Good to have all of you with us. Some things very quickly. Uh, Please use the pew pads. Sign in. That is always helpful to us. Uh, Remember June Dairy Days is coming very quickly. There are still a number of slots open out on the uh, the sign-ups as you depart from the sanctuary on the tables there. Uh, The proceeds, our cut of the proceeds from June Dairy Days goes to some uh, uh, mission work particularly. So um, that's a a way of being part of the mission of of the church, the work of the church, and and at the same time being part of the life of the community. So please join us in one of uh, at at the... uh, at the various tasks that are available for our part of June Dairy Days. And then we also want, uh, we have one prayer concern, we want to keep Arnie Thompson in our prayers. Arnie will be having surgery on Wednesday, so please keep Arnie in your prayers this week. Our order for worship begins with confession and forgiveness. Um, As you are comfortable, would you please rise? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and have given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The opening hymn is hymn number 631. 631.
We continue on page 213 in the front of the hymnal, page 213. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen you may be seated A reading from the 17th chapter of the book of Acts. <clears throat> Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the object of your worship, I found among them an altar with an inscription to an unknown God. When therefore you worship as unknown, 
This I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath in all things. <coughs> From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. And even as some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
I'd like to invite the children to offer a message.
said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. I love having the Sunday school children singing in worship, and at 10.30, sing, they will. They have so much fun practicing and then singing for the congregation. If you were here on Easter at 10.30, you know what I'm talking about. You got to experience their enthusiasm and music. For those who are here later this morning at 10.30, they will get to hear the children sing one last time before the fall. But never fear, if you really want to hear the kids sing, Pastor John is hoping to record their song and get it up on our YouTube channel or on our website as a special Mother's Day extra. As the children sing their song, we experience stewardship. They are using the gifts God has given them the spiritual gifts God has entrusted to them. The very same gifts God entrusted to our senior choir members who sang just a few minutes ago so beautifully. And how I love to listen to them sing as their music fills the sanctuary. This congregation is filled with so many who are gifted with musical talents. The brass players at Easter, the handbell choir on Palm Sunday, the SOS band on the fourth weekend of each month, Linda and Lori who lead us in worship, not to mention all of you shower singers sitting out in the pews. <laughs> Spiritual gifts, however, aren't just related to music. Next week, we will lift up our high school graduates and their giftedness as they move forward in life and into the world. After judging senior exit projects at West Salem High School on Wednesday, I am in awe of some of the gifts God has entrusted to these young people. Future interior designers, teachers, coaches, mechanics, builders, information technologists, caretakers of creation, healthcare workers, scientists, entertainers, and artists. Look out, world, because here they come. The fact is, spiritual gifts come in many different shapes and sizes. It can be found in the most unexpected places. Just look in the mirror. There, staring you right in the face, is a gifted child of God. Someone to whom God has entrusted spiritual gifts. But gifts aren't just dropped off for no particular reason. They are entrusted to be used, and used wisely. And opportunities to use our spiritual gifts are always being placed in front of us. Angie Hemker is looking for people to help with the summer lunch program this year. A chance to use your gifts. And you don't even have to to work in the kitchen. We celebrate those who have shared their gifts of nurture, faith, and care for our children. We have had wonderful Sunday school teachers, helpers, substitutes, and music leaders this year. The quilters are always looking for material, folks to cut squares of fabric and sew them together the gifts of shopping and scrounging and creating. During June Dairy Days, we use our gifts of running or walking, serving food and engaging with the community around us. We feed our community neighbors at the corn roast, meet and greet them during the national night out, and provide groceries at the food pantry. The home communion ministers share conversation and friendship along with the love of God and the bread and wine with those who are homebound. There are limitless projects within the walls of this place and outside of our walls in the world God created 
and entrusted to us. So many gifts, so many ways to use them. But before we get too far, there is a problem with all this talk about spiritual gifts. The problem is the giver of the gifts, the Holy Spirit. You see, we're talking about the work of the Holy Spirit, but hey, it's not Pentecost yet, not for another two weeks. Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus' resurrection, the day when the Holy Spirit descends upon the disciples like fire. They all begin to be heard in the native tongues of those hearing them, and the church is born, and gifts abound. But until then, mum's the word. Don't mention it. Keep it quiet. After all, we can't talk about the Holy Spirit at any other time except for Pentecost, can we? Well, Jesus does, today, in words that were spoken even before he was crucified, Jesus talks about the coming gift of the Holy Spirit. In our reading today, from the night before Jesus was crucified, Jesus already is looking ahead, and he prepares the disciples for the time when he would no longer be with them, like tomorrow. And then after he rises from the dead and ascends to heaven and leaves them alone in the midst of a dangerous and difficult world. Does that sound familiar? A dangerous and difficult world? Then and now? But Jesus knows the world and knows the challenges the world poses to his disciples then and now. And so even before he is crucified, Jesus makes a promise, a promise that he would never leave them. Listen to the words again. The Father will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth. You know him because he abides with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. Because I live, you also will live. I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Curious, though, isn't it? From children to students to choirs to teachers to quilters to corn roasters, lots of gifts entrusted to God's people. The Spirit is indeed at work. But in the words of Jesus, there is something different going on. There are no gifts being given by the Spirit, and yet there is a gift being given. Usually, we think about the Spirit handing over a gift to us, like singing, quilting, organizing, creating, preaching, teaching, healing, caring, and on and on. All of the spiritual gifts we tell our confirmation students that they have been given, but this time, the gift is different. This time, the gift isn't a thing handed over and entrusted. This time, the gift is the Holy Spirit itself, the very presence of the Spirit. Jesus told the disciples in a little while he would be leaving them, and the world would not always see him, which had to be a scary thought for those disciples. Being alone for any of us can cause anxiety, fear, uncertainty, loneliness. But Jesus also told the disciples that he would not leave them orphaned, and that the Father would give them another advocate who would be with them forever, the Holy Spirit. The gift, not merely given by the Spirit, the gift of the Spirit herself. The same gift promised by Jesus and delivered to us. For Jesus also promises us that we won't be alone, that the Spirit will be with us forever, will always surround us and accompany us. In the midst of a world that is scary and broken, the gift of singing or preaching or preparing meals or crafting quilts, the gift of health care or farming, all of these gifts become a part of God's work in the world. But God's greatest gift is not what God hands over. The greatest gift is God's presence. And that is brought to us in the presence 
of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, always with us, is what gets us through the challenges of each day, knowing that the Spirit lives in us and will never abandon us, brings comfort and confidence. Now, especially on Mother's Day, be careful, very careful, for when the Spirit brings you gifts, don't expect flowers, chocolate, or jewelry. Instead, look carefully. Keep your eyes open for deeper gifts, <coughs> like singing, quilting, organizing, wisdom, understanding, or knowledge. But don't sell the Spirit short, for the Holy Spirit has a lot more up her sleeve. Remember the promise. Remember that the greatest gift of the Spirit cannot be seen, only experienced. And in the fulfillment of the promise, we do experience something beyond us. We experience the Spirit herself. Presence, accompaniment, always being there in and with you, and there is no greater gift than that. Amen. As you're comfortable, would you please rise as we sing hymn number 449, 449.
united in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Especially this day, we pray for Arnie. We pray that you'd be with him this week, that you hold him in your mercy, that you guide the hands of those who care for him, that they may be a part of your healing touch. Hear us, O oh God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. this month is for Sugar Creek Campership, so if we have kids who want to bring things up and adults who want to flag them down or adults who want to come running up, either way is fine. Please feel free to do that. Um, as we do our Hungry Jar um, experience, we also have mission moments, and I want to share with you another mission of this congregation, and this is through our partnership with the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. As we approach the end of the school year, thousands of college students, are maybe millions, I don't know, are preparing to move on to new chapters in life, and some of them have been educated at Lutheran colleges. All the way back to Martin Luther, Lutherans have always treasured education, 
And as groups of Lutherans settled the frontier, they brought with them the desire to educate their young and those of their surrounding community. One of those schools, Luther College, has its roots in an old parsonage outside of Holman. Relocating to Decorah, Iowa, Luther is an example of how Lutheran colleges have grown and are now highly developed, sometimes even world-renowned places of learning. Yet they still remain connected to the ELCA. There are 25 colleges and universities across the ELCA. At ELCA colleges and universities, students are educated for a sense of calling or vocation, opening the path toward a meaningful life of con contribution to the common good through whatever career they choose. But whereas once they were Lutheran enclaves, today these colleges draw students from all backgrounds and even from across the globe. Grounded in the tradition of Luther and the Reformation, Lutheran colleges want students to wrestle with challenges in economics, biology, or literature while exploring deep questions about faith and values. To do this, they encourage conversation with people of diverse backgrounds and with differing opinions. In this way, students come to better appreciate and understand their own beliefs and values. The ELCA provides grants to its colleges. It works with them to develop an atmosphere of inquiry and welcome, and it collaborates with campus ministries to support students in their journey. Our Saviors is a part of that support through our mission dollars that go to the um, Cross Area Synod and then to the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. So thank you for your support of this congregation, which allows us to partner with the Synod and the ELCA and in that way become partners with colleges as they make a difference in many, many lives. As you're comfortable, would you please rise and join in the Cantile of, Canticle of Thanksgiving on page 219 in the front of it. and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Would you pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and know Christ, broken and poured out for you. As we receive the sacrament, please note that we have gluten-free wafers in addition to standard wafers. We also have grape juice in addition to the wine. If you have need of those items, please indicate that to us as you come forward. For those of you who are visitors with us, please note the communion invitation in the bulletin. We do sincerely invite you to join with us. And as we commune, we invite you to sing hymn number 613. You may be seated. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. 
With your word in this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. We continue singing hymn number 840. Serve the risen one. 